Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video we're going to talk about the 1965 VW Beetle. Let's get to it. So here we are boys and girls, the 1965 Volkswagen Beetle. This is part of our Build a Bug project program where a client has signed on for us to restore him a 65 Volkswagen. I don't know if you've been following the journey of this car. This is an original car from an original family and uh, they sent it to me to be restored. And we are just about done. A couple little trinkets here and there that we have to work on, but overall, um, just about done. I actually took it out on its maiden voyage yesterday. Could you believe it? It was about 80 degrees here in New York, and I was able to take this car out for a nice ride. And uh, she is a beauty. So 64, uh, 65, and 66 had this sea blue, and is one of my favorite colors that Volkswagen offered. So in 65, I'm going to go over some of the obvious changes. Um, not every, I can't fit all the changes. Uh, into this video, but I'm going to just go over some of the obvious changes that happened in 65. So, uh, first and foremost, what you'll notice is the front is pretty much the same as the 64, uh, but and then as you get closer, the big change that happened in 65 were the window sizes. Okay, so the front windshield actually increased close to or around 11%, so it got bigger, and it actually has now a bow in it. So you can see there's a slight bend in the windshield so it's not flat like the previous year and the reason why they did that is to prevent glare all this stuff was for safety all this was to make the Volkswagen better the doors vent windows uh, and uh, door window glass here also got larger as well the vent post changed in this year uh, and I have videos on this on how the seal has changed uh, the post is now attached to the whole vent window frame as opposed to being separate uh, so a lot of changes happen there. Also the scraper has now chrome that goes up and around the front here. 64 and earlier stopped right about here. Okay. And when you get to the back quarter windows, the back quarter windows actually increased about, I think about 18% in size, something like that. Um, and the back window actually increased about 20%. So uh, everything got larger. So the roof had to all change. Structurally things had to change. And this was off to make vision better uh, and to make the the ride safer. Door and window mechanisms also change, so you gotta you gotta make sure. Sometimes when you get aftermarket uh, outside door handles, you gotta take a look at your VIN number and make sure your VIN falls into a certain time period uh, for these handle changes when you get new ones, because uh, these mechanisms did change. The window winder mechanism also changed. I have a video on that on how it's more of a tubular fashion now and goes through the inside of the door to make the window go up and down. Um, this is also the year where they, they stopped the two-tone, the last year of the two-tone door panels and seats. Okay, now this is a one-year only seat. For 64 was one year only, 65 was one year only, and then 66 was one year only. But this is the year where they actually, they thinned out the backrest and now the piping rolls over the backrest as opposed to uh, coming up and going across. So as you see here, they had this seat was basically from 65, 66, 67 were very similar, but they did change mechanisms from down here. So this is correct for 65. 66 would have went with a, a bigger arm, and then in 67, um, mid 67 or so, they had then the the mechanism here to move the backrest forward and back. But as you can see here, this is a bone stock interior. So it's got this gray mesh um, that was exactly what was offered back in 65. We went to the exact specifications for this car. And uh, you can get this interior with TMI. TMI with Wolfsburg West, you buy this, and this is absolutely correct what it would have been. So it's more of an off-white here, uh, more like a light, light gray, and you have this mesh gray uh, seat upholstery. And then when you get to the dash, Pretty much the same as the previous models. Um, horn ring here changed uh, briefly, and then they went back to the D ring eventually. But 64 would have had a D ring, and earlier. Um, so a couple little minor changes right there. Uh, but overall, this was the last year of basically the two-tone uh, interior that you see here. Once they went to 66, it was basically getting to solid colors. Here is your vinyl headliner, and this was basically started in this style in 64 and continued onward 
uh, into the uh, early 60s, even into 70, I believe, uh, where they still had that tuck around the back window. Don't uh, quote me on that. Some of the, if anyone wants to chime in on the correctness of the, the headliner here, the characteristics, I do believe they still had this multi-piece, somewhat of a multi-piece headliner like you see here. And like I said, it's only because of the back window with that tuck. A lot of new kits today have the one-piece headliner and you get rid of that tuck in the back. Uh, but this continued onward uh, into the 60s just like this with a white vinyl or off-white vinyl perforated with the, the small tiny holes. Now 65 was the last year where they had the moon or smoothie rims. Okay, so you have the moon hubcap and the smoothie rims. This is the last year they had this. Once they went to 66, they went to a slotted rim and the hubcap was flat. So I do love the look of the 65 and earlier rims, the smoothies. I think it just looks more classic. Plus the uh, 65, 66 and later rims now, the aftermarket hubcaps are really not the greatest. Uh, plenty of times you, you go out for a ride, you hit a bump, and that hubcap is flying off. We here have the, uh, the German hubcap, and uh, I get these German hubcaps from uh, CIP1.com. They're actually, uh, CIP1 seems to be the most inexpensive when it comes to these. I think they're about $65 or $70 a piece now, which is, you know, it's, it's amazing. You see these prices for these hubcaps have gone up for the German, but uh, it's definitely worth it, and they're a little more heavy duty, and uh, you don't see them flying off, and there's really no imperfection in the chrome. Okay, so now as we come around the back, the other change that happened in this year is the Declid. This is the Declid where they still kept the teardrop shape, as you see here, okay, but they went to a push button, as you see here, okay, before this was still the T-handle. 64 had, was the last year of the T-handle, and the 64 had a one-year Declid. You had the T-handle, but you had this long license light housing. So, uh, but in 65, they uh, went to this push button, and we'll open this up, and here's your, your gorgeous 40 horsepower motor. And now this is the last year of the 40 horse motor. Uh, and 65 had a change in the motor where the, the heads were different, um, and also the studs and such. Um, you could do a little more research on that uh, in, a, in a Haynes manual or a Bentley manual. They talk about that. Um, but basically, this is your 40 horsepower motor. Also, the apron changed in, uh, in this year as well, so now you don't have the painted catch that's on the apron. You have this new metal bracket that attaches for the new push button uh, uh, latch here. So, um, but 40 horsepower is a different animal when it comes to valve adjustment and, and stuff, and also when it comes to ignition timing. So you wanna get yourself a Haynes manual or a Bentley book and they have the specifications there. Uh, but what I'll briefly tell you is when you do the valve adjustment on this, it's eight and 12. So uh, eight on the intake, 12 on the exhaust. And I know that seems odd to many people because it always sounds like six thousandths is the right setting for these motors, but it's not across the board. So uh, if you definitely get your, your specifications manual, you'll be able to see that's eight and 12. And then the ignition timing. Now, ignition timing with the correct distributor. So we have the correct distributor here for the 40 horse, 65 motor, okay? And it is actually 10 degrees before top dead center. So go figure, I mean, a lot of uh, guys, it's seven and a half degrees, they're all saying, but yes, many times when you change that distributor to an 009 or the taller distributor, like I mentioned in one of my earlier videos from years ago, uh, seven and a half degrees before top dead center seems to be uh, the way to go. So, um, but if you, are, if you are bone stock, nothing is modified, nothing's changed, you gotta go with the 10 degrees before top dead center, so. Uh, we completely rebuilt this motor and we actually put a big bore piston and cylinder kit on this car which is I think is a great little upgrade for a 40 horsepower motor. There's no machining of the block, everything still looks stock, there's nothing else that has to be modified but you get yourself a little kick and now you're up to a 1385 as opposed to being a 1200. So a uh, really cool motor, I took this out for a drive yesterday and it is just, just beautiful. The other change that happened on the interior which I'm trying to get in here for you um, is the backrest to the back seat. As you can see now, it's carpeted and you have a strap back here. So this is the first year where you can actually fold the backrest down and it lays completely flat. And now you have some more luggage space uh, or storage space behind the back seat. Um, so uh, another cool feature, but prior to this, the upholstery um, on the earlier bugs wrapped all the way around the back, but this is the first year where they put the carpet in the back.
Now, there were an array of colors that were offered in these years. Uh, nothing that's too standout-ish. Um, sea blue, I think, is my favorite. Uh, they did have ruby red, they had black, they had Fontana gray, Yukon yellow for convertibles, uh, pearl white. Um, very, you know, the, the standard bug colors were in these years. Um, you can take a look at that online. I have a video on uh, finding colors for your year. Wolfsburg West has them, has them all um, uh, listed. And then uh, you can do a cross-reference to many of the PPG codes today, but just do be careful with that. Uh, sometimes those codes are just not working. I don't know why. Um, so uh, that was basically it. This is, you know, I went over briefly um, the, the, the changes that happened in 65. And as you can see, it still has much of the vintage look. It still has king and uh, link pin front end. So suspension wise in the front, it's still the same. Then you go to ball joint until the following year. Um, but overall, you still have that vintage look. You still got the moon hubs, and everything is pretty very is very subtle to the average person. The, the Volkswagen person will, of course, pick out uh, some other things that happened in '65. But you know, it's amazing that you know that everyone says uh, you know '67 was the one year only car. It's like almost every year the Beetle had one year only features. So it's uh, it's it's pretty interesting. So. Uh, overall, that is about it, guys. 65, build the bug program, almost done for our client. And I uh, can't wait to polish her up and get her all shiny and, and debut her in the sun. So, and show you guys what she's like, and we'll go for a drive. But uh, up until then, uh, if you guys got any questions, give me an email, chris at classicvwbugs.com, or visit my website, www.classicvwbugs.com. Take care. Um.